Thank you so much for joining us on this platform. Good morning, Shelby. So, being the director of DSIMS, what is your philosophy of leadership? How would you describe your leadership style? Well, uh, Shelby, I like to thank uh, College Dunia for giving this opportunity to discuss with you and uh, uh, put my thoughts. Well, you asked me about the uh, leadership uh, style. Well, the DSIMS leadership style, rather than my personal style, is distributed leadership. We believe in the philosophy of distributed leadership. DSIMS has got a rich uh, intellectual uh, pool, uh, teaching as well as non-teaching. And ever since I took over DSIMS, in fact, I took over in the year 2014. I believe in the distributed leadership where decisions are taken consultatively with senior leaders. We have a very good faculty council. So we discussed important details, thread back, and then we take a decision. We found this uh, style is uh, very effective. Uh, be it any decision we take, we use our both the brines, the left brine and right brine, the analytical as well as the intuitional right thoughts. We have been found this leadership style is working very well, and we are quite successful in achieving few milestones. So what are some of the biggest challenges you see both for higher education in general and for DSMI specifically? Well, today, uh, institutions, especially uh, higher education, have big challenges, uh, be it uh, in India or in the, in the global perspective. The challenge is, of course, when I talk about challenge, I think we should not leave the opportunities as well. The challenges are the in-person, in-class interactions are not happening. So therefore, the institutions that are willing to adopt the new technology, the institution that believes in digitization, the institution that believes in dispersing the intellectual asset through the technology available will survive. To that extent, I can say the challenges are plenty. The institutions, they learn to learn. The institutions that learn to adapt will survive. Now, having said that, this new challenge, forget COVID-19 pandemic, this is going to be with us for at least for a few months, if not few years. This also, the new norm also gives a good opportunities. So it is up to the institution, it is up to the leadership of those institutions to capitalize this challenging opportunity. So in your professional career so far, what are the key factors that connected you with the education sector? Well, in my personal and professional career, I have been an academician throughout. I have been in the leadership position for more than 20 years. So by virtue of my position, by virtue of my deliverables, I have been involved in various activities. In fact, my biggest connection, connections are with the colleges, the graduate, with the graduate colleges, students, and the teachers, college professors, and the different networking organizations. There are so many associations 
are being associated with many universities in different levels, are being a board member of different universities. I am also a board member of Mumbai University. So this uh, profession has given me various opportunities to interact with different stakeholders. And I've been enjoying this completely because when you interact with students, when you interact with academicians, when you interact with parents, you really feel good because as a teacher, as a director, you have been giving back to the society, which I completely enjoy. So how does the curriculum of DSIMS ensure the best practice of the industry? Well, the curriculum of DSIMS is well tested. We believe in going back to the industry with our existing curriculum. We will bring people from the industry and we also do our own research, studying our alumni, the success and failure of our alumni. We interact with the alumni, we interact with the industry and then every year we bring everything on board. We have a discussion on board of studies and the academic council and the bigger councils. We make a lot of changes. So our curriculum is evolving. We keep changing. The success lies in the result. If you see the results of DSIMS, the placement record, that would speak for itself. But we keep on reviewing this. We keep on interacting with the corporate leaders to make changes. We don't hesitate to bring new subjects, new ideas, and new knowledge, a new skill-based learning in our curriculum. So the education systems in India and other foreign countries are structured very differently. In your experience, what can an inbound student gain from studying here in DSIMS? Well, what I understand by inbound, uh, you mean uh, students coming from uh, different countries and they pursue the management, if my understanding is right. When the inbound students come to India, uh, to learn about management concepts. They learn Indian perspective. They learn Asian perspective. They learn the India's perspective or the Indian industry's perspective about different markets, be it European markets or North American markets or South American markets. What uh, India as a nation can do for such inbound students, to offer them the rich practices that is happening. There are so many successful stories in India. There are so many companies that have been doing extremely well, but unfortunately the, the success story is written. The intellectual capital about those success stories are very limited. So what we do at DSIM is we focus more about the Indian success stories, the analytical issues of the Indian industry, industries, and visa vis with the other countries. So these all are good opportunities for any inbound student who comes to DSIMS or who comes to any best B school in India to learn about the nuances of management thoughts and philosophies. So when you first came to DSIMS, what was your vision for the college? Has it evolved over time? And how far along in implementing that vision are you? Well, when I joined uh, DSIMS, uh, the leadership was very good. In fact, the lineage of this trust uh, consists of very successful leaders, uh, trustees, comprise many management leaders and corporate captains. So it was easy for me to uh, instill my uh, belief and my vision. So I would consider myself lucky when I joined this uh, 
then three year old uh, dear science now this is my seventh year book so when i joined here i found i prioritized a uh, few things of course as i said i believe in the distributed leadership we had a very good team of uh, faculty colleagues so i joined them and then on the drawing board we discussed what else we can so a couple of things we identified as a key the priorities priority number 1 we thought that we'll go global so we initiated a lot of things towards a global exposure so we as a dsims join hands with many uh, international schools as a result professors from different colleges from different countries they used to come here and they take exclusive courses for weeks together secondly our students visit regularly different countries not limited to south asian countries our students regularly go to countries like usa germany switzerland spain France, Belgium, Netherlands, Hungary, and many more countries. So when they go, they learn many things. Staying at those universities, the respective uh, respective universities, they learn many things from there. Not only that, they visit industries. They interact with local corporate captains. They do a lot of certificate courses and they come back. So this. interaction this visit gives them plenty of opportunities for them to understand the realities of international business so that is one the second thing we emphasized strong industry relationship and placements so we i uh, set up a very strong corporate relationship team that team is headed by one of the senior professors and he interacted with hundreds of companies in mumbai and i can very proudly say we get about 300 to 400 companies every year to recruit our students uh, so that is my second uh, vision we successfully managed to do it and the third we in dsims set up a case study center this case study center is very unique though we subscribe howard business school for their cases i encouraged my faculty members to write indian specific cases and i'm very happy to say dsims has got its own cases written by our own faculty members these three i consider major milestones uh, through my vision so what would you like people to know about the university that they may not know about well i think you are talking about uh, institute we are an institute so uh, people should know uh, about dsims besides its placement besides it's a corporate relationship the faculty student relationship this institute has got a very unique dna here we have excellent faculty members our fabric is that we believe and trust the close relationship with students this is very evident if you visit any of the social site about the review of the assignments you would invariably find students at alumni talk about the relationship between the professors and the faculty and one thing i can very proudly say i may be the captain of this institute but my number is with every student each and every student of this institute you can call me any time you can talk to me any time they can discuss anything with you 
So that is about the relationship. When I say they can talk to me, they can discuss with me, this is applicable to all my colleagues, all my faculty colleagues, all my senior colleagues and everyone. We are well connected with students. So coming back to uh, the, the question of what is that DSIMS, you know, I mean, is known or I like to be known. The relationship, because that is very important. Uh, the faculty and student relationship is the bedrock or keystone of the success and we having success there. And besides this relationship, I can say that our commitment to the social cause, that is again one of, you know, a very key aspects in DSIMS. DSIMS does so many things about social responsibility. And uh, it is also known well, but if, since you're asking, students should also know our keen desire, our commitment to the social causes of this institute. So what do you think should be DSIMS uh, top priority of the next 10 years? Uh, well, you know, I mean, this is, uh, I mean, if you see the short uh, goal, uh, we have uh, now uh, two uh, institutes, two entities. One is looking after MMS, the other is looking after PTDI. Now, in a short span of time, in uh, 10 years' time, DSIMS is known, well known in Mumbai. We stand well within the 10th positions in Mumbai. So, as regards the, uh, the goal or the milestone, we would like to be known as one of the uh, leading management institutes that creates a leaders because our, our tagline itself is we create leaders. Not that we, we just fill it out we mean it in every sense. So we like to create these leaders and we like to again go back to the industry and touch base with our students, come back to our boardroom and we like to understand to what extent we have achieved our vision statement of creating the leader. Because leadership and leader is a very, very generic word. But at the assignments, uh, we we have a different definition for leader. The students who pass up from DSIMS have to be a leader in every sense. He should be a leader in delivering the desired goal. He should be a leader in human relation. He should be a leader in the sensitivity, understanding the sensitivity of the nation, sensitivity of the, of the world, and he should be a, a leader in everything, when I say everything, uh, among the leaders, among the stakeholders of the industry, wherever he or she is. So that is how we like to know the assignments and that is what is our long object. Any suggestions uh, you would like to give to the current youth and the aspiring youth? Uh, well, uh, the current uh, youth, uh, the young leaders, are very lucky, I would say, uh, because they have plenty of opportunities now. They are well versed in this digital era, and uh, the information is uh, at their fingertips. But uh, what I would uh, advise them, they should be multitasking. At one stage, the multitasking was uh, looked down. But today, uh, 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 the youngster would be required to perform many things. Uh, so uh, even uh, they perform their hobbies. I would say hobbies are okay. In fact, you, know, you do your own painting, you do your cooking, you do blogging and everything. Apart from that, to make one individual as a perfect and accomplished uh, person, he has to learn many, many things. 
So my advice to young leaders, please do not squander away this golden opportunity. Today, everything is available digitally. If you want to connect with any leader today, you are connected through LinkedIn, Instagram. There are so many avenues. So please understand, keep connected and learn many things. Opportunities are available. The youngsters have to spend time to learn the new skills, be it soft skill or be it hard skill. I think they will be successful. Are they are immensely talented? I can tell you that. Thank you so much for your insightful message, sir. And I'm sure the viewers would gain a lot of learnings from this interview. Thank you, Shelby. In fact, uh, I have, uh, I mean, completely enjoyed the interaction with you. I once again like to thank College Dunia for giving this uh, golden opportunity. I'm sure my little interaction would help the students. And I'm available always, not only to my students, any student who likes to learn and know anything about their science or anything about leadership or anything about their own development. I'd be very happy to help. Thank you, Watson. Thank you so much.